Okay, now we're recording. Um, the first thing I want to say is that um, I'm going to change the order of the agenda that was published. I want to take the two Greenwich Village Society, or shall we say village preservation topics first, uh, though I don't see those folks here yet, uh, because they're very quick. Here. I see Sarah. All right. And Louisa. Louisa's I'm here. here. Hello. It's Louisa. I don't see Louisa. Oh, there you are, Louisa. Right here. Okay. Hello. Yeah, so you guys can go first. We, I think, Sandra, we can consider the, the uh, role taken. Okay. Because I see everybody. We're small. Anisha, do you consider your role taken? Um, yes, that's fine. I wanted to make sure if there are any comments on the two sets of minutes that I sent out, um, both from January, no, February 2021 and from December 2020. Um, if there are comments. One comment is that there are a few typos, like some names are misspelled and stuff like that. I don't know if you want to. Sure, I can. But other than that, I think they are accurate. Also, there is a telephone number attending. Maybe you want to check if it is a member of the committee. Who is this telephone number? It uh, ends at 434, starts with 917. Yeah. Um, Mr. or Ms. 917, could you identify yourself? I wish to remain anonymous. Is that Crystal, maybe? Crystal, are you on the Zoom? Maybe. We'll find out eventually. I usually rename them if I know who they are. Um, OK, so you have no objection to your minutes. Is that correct, Anisha? We'll make some uh, grammatical error, or like changing right. um, those, but no real changes. Okay. And uh, from the Landmarks Committee side, are there any objection to the minutes from the January meeting? No. No? Okay. So we'll consider those approved. And now we can move to the agenda. Uh, Sarah, who wants to go first, you or Louisa? I I'm, a, I'm gonna give it to Louisa. Okay, Louisa. She did oh, such Louisa. outstanding work. She needs to start this off really well. Okay. So you're going to speak about 8080 10th Street, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, so hi, my name is Louisa Winchell. I'm the Research and Preservation Associate at Village Preservation. Thanks so much for having us. Um, Village Preservation recently submitted a new letter to the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission on the history of sculptor Selma Hortense Burke who lived and worked at 88 East 10th Street. So I'll give a brief summary of our findings and our request. Um, the National Women's History Museum has called Selma Hortense Burke one of the most notable sculptors of the 20th century. She was an artist, educator, described herself as a people sculptor. Um, and she lived at 88 East 10th Street from 1944 until at least 1949, according to New York City directories. Um, and while here, she completed the Four Freedoms, which was a two and a half by three and a half foot relief plaque commemorating President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, which was used as a model for his image on the US dime coin. Burke is celebrated for her lifelong commitment to the art of sculpture and to art education, for her highly regarded portrayals of towering African-American figures such as Martin Luther King Jr., Booker T. Washington, and Mary McLeod Bethune, for her significance in the Harlem Renaissance, for her unabashed drawing upon African models for her art and for achieving success as a black woman sculptor at a time when few female or black artists and even fewer black female artists were able to achieve recognition in the United States. So she was born in North Carolina on December 31st, 1900. She obtained a degree as a registered nurse and then moved to New York City in the midst of the Harlem Renaissance. She then received a fellowship in the 1930s, which allowed her to study in Europe. Upon returning to New York City, Burke taught sculpture at the Works Progress Administration sponsored Harlem Community Arts Center, which was considered one of the most influential art centers to emerge during the Harlem Renaissance. During this time, she met and started a relationship with the renowned Harlem Renaissance author, Claude McKay. She then received a scholarship to study art at Columbia University from which she graduated in 1941. 
Shortly thereafter, Burke joined a competition to create a profile portrait of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And in 1943, her portrait won and she was commissioned to produce a relief plaque of the president. Burke then had two sittings to sketch the president in person and completed the plaque while living at 88 East 10th Street. In March 1945, while she was still living and working there, Eleanor Roosevelt visited her studio to approve the final design. The plaque was dedicated following Roosevelt's death on September 24th in 1945 at the Recorder of Deeds building in Washington, D.C., the Four Freedoms, as it was called, was unveiled by Frederick Weaver, who was Frederick Douglass's grandson, and President Harry S. Truman spoke at the event. While U.S. Mint Chief Engraver John Sinnock is credited with Roosevelt's image on the U.S. dime coin, Burke's relief plaque is widely accepted as the model and original version. And throughout her life, Burke herself insisted that her design was plagiarized on the dime coin. Significantly, Burke also established the Selma Burke School of Sculpture while living here um, in 1946. At the time, her school was located at 67 West 3rd Street, which is now Demolish. Um, in her later life, Burke moved to Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and she operated the Selma Burke Art Center from 1968 until 19 1981 in Pittsburgh. While here, she also worked for the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts and completed a number of her sculptural projects for which she is well known today. Her final monumental work was an eight foot, sculpt eight foot tall sculpture of Martin Luther King Jr. which stands in Marshall Park in Charlotte, North Carolina and was dedicated in 1980. Over the course of her career, Burke also completed portraits of Booker T. Washington, Duke Ellington, Mary McLeod Bethune, and other renowned Black figures. And her work is now found in the collection of the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture and the Smithsonian American Art Museum, among other museums and institutions. Um, she received a number of awards in 1979. President Jimmy Carter awarded her the Women's Caucus for Art Lifetime Achievement Award. She received an Essence Magazine Award and a number of honorary doctorates. Pennsylvania Governor Milton Schapp created Selma Burke Day on July 20th, 1975. Um, and after a long and profoundly significant career, Burke passed away on August 29th, 1995 at the age of 94. So Village Preservation believes that the remarkable and groundbreaking history of Selma Hortense Burke at 88 East 10th Street gives further basis for the designation of this building as part of a historic district south of Union Square. In a previous letter, we detailed the building's history and significance. Um, it was built in 1844 by Peter Stuyvesant, who was a direct descendant of the last Dutch governor of New Amsterdam. And then in the 20th century, it became the home and studio of artist Willem de Kooning. And while he was living here, the building was both the center of the 10th Street Artist Enclave that defined mid 20th century American art and the place where de Kooning would complete some of his most important work. So for all of these reasons, we've been strongly encouraging the New York City landmark Landmarks Preservation Commission to quickly move ahead with consideration of landmark designation of 88 East 10th Street. Thank you. Thank you, that's great. Um, that's, that house has quite a history, doesn't it? And maybe relevant to our merged committees or joint committees that are meeting today since it was so important in art history. Um, so, Let's hear from you, Sarah, and then we'll consider a resolution in support of the request for evaluation. Yeah, just real quick, I want to mention that Louisa was researching something else and came across uh, Selma, Selma's name in association with this property. It was really such, um, and then she did all this wonderful research, and it was just so amazing. I did the letter for um, Willem de Kooning living there, which LPC initially turned down, but this was, um, this was really extraordinary. So um, anyway, so uh, um, uh, Linda asked me just to mention what Village Preservation is working on now. Um, and um, we, I'm gonna share my screen. I think I have to make you a co-host to let you do that, Sarah. Hold on. Well, can you? I was just going to show a few things that we have. Yes, please. On. We want. To, we definitely want to see. Okay. Okay. Now you should be a host. You should be able to do Alrighty. it. Alrighty. Uh, here we go. I 
Um, so what we just released um, was our SOHO NOHO report refuting a lot of the city's, um, um, you know, uh, the things that they're saying is, is uh, gonna help the area. Um, and we just, uh, re this is an extensive comprehensive report that if you have the time to read, I highly recommend and it's on our website. Um, we also, um, and this is part of your area. So this part is your area. Uh, recently we received, we released the um, documentation of all the buildings in this area and all of this area we've been trying to get um, designated for landmarks protections. And um, it's, uh, it's kind of fun to read. Actually, Louisa had a big part in that again. Um, and then um, if we go, whoops. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble sharing the rest of my screen. Um, and then just, um, you know, we've, we've been documenting this area and we have it fully documented through the uh, building block survey that we have, which we're constantly updating. One of the latest things we've been doing actually since COVID, because we have some interns to help us out, um, is putting all the 1940s photos with every single building. But we've been document, we consistently we, um, document these buildings. Uh, here's a building that we asked uh, for an RFE on. You all supported it. We appreciated that there's been other buildings in that area, but we really feel that this area is way under um, landmarked and uh, okay. deserves Did you more get a response to that RFE? Uh, initially, they turned it down. Mm -hmm. But then we went back, right? Yeah, and then we didn't hear. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that they... Um, <clears throat> um disputed it was because they felt that the paint job couldn't um be proved as original which is kind of crazy <laughs> um then uh so um uh so anyway, so these are the buildings that we've been looking at. There's been others also on Third Street and Fourth Street. Um, we are continuing to push the LPC on this. They initially said to us when Sarah Carroll got um, became chair that um, she was interested in looking at further designations in the East in um, the East um, Village area. That has been dropped. Um, we're working with EVCC, LESBI, HDC on this, and um, we'll continue to push on this. So these are our projects going forward with, um, with um, protecting the East Village. Well, you know, I can say that we very much appreciate the work you're doing on this, and we would like to be kept up to date as these, as these items move through the LPC or fail to move through the LPC, as the case may be and to support you where we can, um, where, where it seems relevant to do so. And I think in the case of 8080 East 10th Street, it does seem relevant to do so. So if you unshare your screen, I will share my screen. Sorry, stop share. Let me put up my resolution. Let's see if I've got it here. Uh, Sarah, could you uh, just clarify something? Yeah. Uh, is Village Preservation advocating for an individual landmark designation for um, this building, or are you just providing further historical information in advocating for the historic district? Two things. We, want, we feel that the district should be expanded, and we also think that this building should be landmarked. Individually, yeah, yes. It, but if the if the district wanted to go out, okay, I think it might be tough with some of the buildings that's around it. But um, but we're looking at we we're looking at all options for the East Village. Good. Okay. Um, any more questions about this property? 
So I would say that the points, the points that are important are that it was built in 1844 by Peter Stuyvesant, that um, it was the residence of two important artists, um, William de Kooning and Sel Selma Hortense Burke. And so that's what I captured in this very brief resolution and I will, I will share it. If I can. I think there are two questions, one from Laura and one from David. Okay. I have to use now. Everybody sees it okay? So it's very brief. It says support for consider support for consideration. Consideration. Considera support for the request for evaluation submitted by Village Preservation regarding 88 East 10th Street. Whereas 88 East 10th Street, I wish I could type, was built in 1844 by Peter Stuyvesant, a direct descendant of the last Dutch governor of New Amsterdam. And whereas in the 20th century, it became the home and studio of artist Willem de Kooning from 1952 to 1959, becoming the place where de Kooning would complete some of his most important work. And whereas the African-American sculptor Selma Hortense Burke lived and worked at 88 East 10th Street from 1944 to 1949, completing the Four Freedoms, which was used as a model for the image on the US dime coin. I should say the image of FDR, right? On the US dime coin. So therefore be it resolved, Community Board 3 urges the Landmarks Preservation Commission to reconsider the request for evaluation for 10 East 88th Street. Comments? Uh, David, uh, yes. reconsider so they rejected it yes they did and what was their um supposed reasons for rejecting it they said that they evaluated all buildings associated with willem de kooning and that the most important one was at 831 broadway and mm -hmm. so therefore they didn't need to consider the other buildings and um we disagreed with that and sent in 88 East 10th Street. It actually was my favorite RFB to write. And then Louisa, um, you know, through looking directories, found this incredible history. And so we resubmitted. Okay. Um, I, I need to ask folks to raise their hand when they want to speak. I think David Adams was next. I beg your pardon. No, that's okay, David. Yeah, I was just looking at the, I just got my computer to work visual, and I just saw the very few moments of that list picture of the of the building, and those windows are arched, so like a religious purpose or something, there's a religious connotation, so was ever, was there another use for that building ever in some along religious lines? You're fine? Uh, I don't believe we found that, um, but I can, I'm happy to look into that. Just the arch of the windows make me think it's not just a residence. It sounds like David might be confusing the church with the building under. Or maybe because I said I didn't have, I did not have my visual until a very a few moments ago. Okay. Maybe I am confusing them. All right. I thought I was losing my mind. I didn't remember arched windows. <laughs> okay. No. Well, I found it. I give it back to you. Okay. Um, does anyone else on the committee wish to speak before we go to people in the audience? Okay, uh, Laura. Oh, hi. Um, I, 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 I'm just speaking on, on behalf of myself uh, for the East Village Communi Community Coalition, as well as Lesby. Um, we're just thrilled for discover this remarkable research and the fact that it appears to be serendipitous makes it that elevates it for me rather than diminishes it i think it's just fantastic so congratulations to village preservation for discovering something right in our backyard that's so important that we didn't know i've been asking people just hey did you know that did you know an african-american woman you know won the contest to carve the image of fdr and Nobody knows that, let alone that she did it while she was in the East Village. So it's really fantastic. Thank we we're, we're super excited about it. Thank you. You never know what you'll find across, uh, find in the directories. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, any other comments? Um, committee, um, how do we feel about uh, passing this resolution? In favor. A second. David. Are you there, David? Yeah, I so, uh, yes. Yes, okay, and I'm a yes. I didn't, I thought you were gonna, you're not taking a roll call, you just want to murder screaming. screen. I'm, just, okay, I'm yes. taking, I'm taking votes. Yours, yours, mine, Mitchell's, and so <coughs> Okay, it is passed. Thank you, everybody. And that and, was a yes from Thomas as well. I'm just curious. Um, this is passing through landmarks. It would be better if we actually accepted the, the arts and community, arts and culture community, and have more people voting for it. <laughs> well, it's, it's premature, I'm afraid. That's okay. That's right. Well, you took this part one at first. I yeah. hope that uh, this is a point of uh, mutual interest, actually, um, between the two okay. cities, which is serendipitous. Okay. Okay, everybody's back. Um, okay, so we're done with the pure landmarks portion of this meeting. Um, Anisha and I will sort of co-chair um, the discussion between the two committees. We're asked just whether we would like to join together into one big landmark and landmarks and arts committee or arts and landmarks committee. Uh, and I'm very interested to know how people feel about that, uh, pro or con. Um, and well, I can give a little bit of um, background also as to sort of how this all came about. Um, so as you know, the Arts and Culture Subcommittee currently uh, is a subcommittee to economic development. Um, there has been sort of leadership change and, you know, the subcommittee is thinking about um, and spent the last meeting in February um, sort of planning for the year, thinking about what leadership could look like. And one of the big sentiments was obviously that they didn't want to just be a subcommittee, they wanted to be a full committee. And um, because Landmarks um, is a smaller committee and also doesn't meet every single month, um, and because there is sort of overlap in, perhaps overlap in interest and content, um, that merging these two committees to have one larger committee with, you know, lots of different perspectives um, would behoove both uh, committees and this group. Um, so I guess the purpose of tonight is really to discuss what that would look like. Um, I, think, I can't remember if we're supposed to actually have a resolution. Is that what it says on the agenda? I don't think that's necessary. I think um, we might end up with a recommendation or a feeling on the part of both groups. I have no idea where this is going to go. I'm open to whatever anybody wants to say about it. Um, and ultimately, I, the decision is not with either Linda or I. Um, no, it, it is that's... with the chair of the board and, you know, whoever Absolutely. else. Um, so we just want to make sure that, you know, we took a lot of the feedback. Linda was actually at the Arts and Culture Subcommittee meeting last month. Um, so also heard all of the feedback and this is um, the clearest path forward, but we also understand that this might be not what everybody wants. Okay, so, so I'll appreciate it if you raise your hand if you want to speak so we don't have total chaos. And I see David Adams has his hand up. Yeah, hi, if I remember correctly, way back when, this was part of the of a uh, you uh, it, it, this arts and culture came from another committee parks this part of it parks. came from parks so what they feel it's better put back with us but well we were also part of parks weren't we, we were also part of parks that's correct and so why um well, i have the history i guess parks is busy enough so we can put our two together and all right, that's what I was trying to remember where where arts and they came from. We both came from parks. Yeah, there's a long history there. Okay, all right. Um, and now, arts is a subcommittee of economic development, which maybe makes some sense, um, and maybe not. I don't know. And I never quite 
saw that, but <laughs> so maybe with know, the executive it makes, committee. It makes sense to the powers that be. Um, maybe put it with put it with the executive committee. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it is true that arts and culture is critical to the economic health of our city, and that was the idea. I'm not. I'm, I don't want to be, um, you know, casual about my feelings about this. Um, uh, Mitchell, you were next. Yeah, um, the Landmarks Committee has a very um, discreet mandate that's sort of um, in line with the Landmarks Law. In other words, it's my understanding that the Landmarks Committee only deals with landmarks and their regulation and uh, the issue of potential landmarks and budgeting issues related to that. Uh, so I'd like to know what the mandate of the Arts and Culture Committee is. Anybody want to answer that? Anisha, do you want to speak sure, to that? Sure, let me find our um, the like mission statement from last month. I, I think Mitchell is right that that is a thing about the Landmarks Committee is we're part of a legal process in the city, um, which is maybe not quite true of arts, but let's hear what you have to say. Right. Um, come back to me, let me find this. I had my hand up for some other reason too, but now I can't. I'm happy to answer if you want. Go for it, Olympia. I didn't see your hand up though. <laughs> no, I didn't see, have my let's hand be up. Disciplined, okay, please. <laughs> No, no, I don't. I don't have my hand up uh, because I I can help you if you want. I don't. Well, yeah, go ahead. If you want to speak, yeah. <laughs> please. It, 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 as the committee is larger and larger, if people don't just raise their hand when they want to speak, then it becomes chaos. It's so, okay. Then I, I don't need to. to help your your hand is up. Go ahead, speak. Just to unmute. Unmute. Okay, guys, so it is very different nature, right? So there are some committees that they have legal, uh, you know, roles, like in Europe mm -hmm. with land use or, or with you, etc. And arts and culture is a committee that some community boards have and some don't, depending from the needs of the local district. Uh, and in each community board, they do different kind of stuff. Like for instance, uh, in nearby, I think community board one or two, they call it the arts institutions because they have a concentration of institutions and stuff like that. What Anissa has been looking for is in our case, because we have a history of grassroots culture in this district, we have written a mission about how we want to, uh, you know, advocate, let's say, on behalf of arts and culture in this district. And it relates also with the designation that the law recited the Chinatown got during the Create NYC process about the cultural plan for the city of New York where uh, we were, through an analysis, these districts were deemed as um, of peculiar value and as such actually qualified for different kind of funding also allocations. Uh, so I think this a little bit answers your question. So, so would you say that one of your uh, roles is to advocate for funding for the arts in our community? Yes, and I can, I, I can read the mission statement, just found it in my email. Okay. Um, so CB3 Arts and Culture Cultural Affairs Subcommittee advocates for the preservation and advancement of our district's unique legacy as an incubator of independent and ex independent experimental and grassroots artists and arts and culture organizations. We advocate for inclusive, diverse and affordable arts and culture for all members of our community in our galleries, theaters, music venues, libraries, schools, parks, and community centers or gardens is where we come together as a community to learn, bond, grow and enjoy. So I think in general, the subcommittee is more of like a issue based um, committee, you know, when an issue comes up in the community or we proactively um, have a legislative or regulatory or budget um, issue that we're interested in advocating for, we meet and, and um, put resolutions together. Um, and just to, I remember what my other point was, is that um, 
arts and culture was also a subcommittee to parks. It wasn't um, like a joint committee. And this would be, again, um, understanding it would be a, like together as one committee and not a subcommittee. So, um, yes, one. I think that's uh, that advantageous for the arts committee to be a real part of a real committee and maybe advantageous to landmarks to have more people. Um, the question is, do we have enough mutual interest when we hold these meetings? If we were all together, we might spend part of our time talking about a regulatory issue. Um, those who come from the arts side of things will need to learn a little bit about that in order to be able to vote. Um, and on the other hand, to talk about, you know, current issues in the arts community. And we coming from the landmark side are gonna to have to learn more about that um, if, we choose, if we choose to do this. And I'd, I'd be interested to know if anybody feels like this is not a good idea and say why. No? <laughs> Olympia, yes. Yes, I, I don't believe it's a good idea. I, we spent the last month meeting discussing about how it would make sense for us to, to become an independent committee with education. We never discuss landmarks. As most of you know, I'm an architect by training. I serve on land use. I understand landmarks. I love landmarks. But landmarks, I think, have a very specific kind of uh, work that they need to do and approach where I think the way we were trying to develop arts and culture for this district over the past three years was much more something that had to do with community based engagement and things like that. And I did some research since, you know, I, to be honest, I was a little bit baffled by the fact that, you know, it's not even mentioned at the meeting, at the minutes that uh, we basically the majority of the committee, of the subcommittee, sounded excited about uh, working with education at our last month meeting. Uh, I remember several members uh, discussing that. And, um, and, and then we go ahead and discuss the merger with Landmarks. So I went and did some research and I noticed that the majority of the other Manhattan community boards have standalone Landmarks. Nobody has it with anything. And instead, there are several who have, there is actually only one that is called Landmarks and Public Aesthetics, but still, it's, it's basically probably, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's a very specific kind of urban design kind of issues that they want to approach. So I think where, what I was also, I mean, impressed, and I've been talking about that with Alicia for years, is education is a standalone committee in many other community boards. We have it with senior services, humanitarian services. Like we, we have it with like, see, like we have it, I think there are four or five items in that, sub, in that committee. And, and we repeatedly heard as a local mom, I heard it repeatedly that CC and other members say, why is CB3 missing in action here? So when we hear something like that and we take time away from our families to attend these meetings and we cannot serve the issues that we want to serve, it is disconcerting for me. So I love landmarks. Uh, if you need more people, I may consider joining one more committee. But I think that landmarks should not be the place to merge with, uh, with arts and culture. Uh, I still advocate for arts and culture uh, expanding as an independent committee with education. Uh, and I really see why it makes sense for landmarks, especially when you're going to be undertaking major projects to be a standalone committee because you're going to have a lot of work, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that, that's my, my take. So do you think that arts and culture should be a standalone committee? Do you think it should be allied with education in some way? You know, what are you thinking about that? Yeah, I feel that it should be a standalone and it should have uh, education too, because right now education is along with, I can look at it, but I know for sure it's seniors, uh, human resources, but also humanitarian and, and the fourth element that I can look it up later. So I feel that at CB3, we need to be able to serve better education and it would get along well with arts and culture. And do you see anything like that when you were looking at other community boards? Are there any 
similar alliances? Uh, the, the, I think I think I saw one, but I need to go and cross check again that has those two together for sure in Manhattan. I didn't check what happens to the other boroughs, uh, but in Manhattan, at least one there is that has art. Uh, yeah, and I see Tarek moves his hand as he's uh, so yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, Tariq. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, I agree with everything Olympia said. <laughs> You know, um, I, as an artist born and raised in the Lower East Side and as a community board member, um, I was a bit, I'm a bit of offended a little bit by the, by the kind of bounce around of this, this topic um, and this committee, um, you know, because it's, it's really, um, I think even our last meeting, you know, I agree with Olympia, I think we had a very robust discussion about the importance of arts and culture um, and the value that it has in this community and all over the city. I mean, in the world, and it is, is, you know, I, I don't need to speak and advocate for arts in this conversation, but, you know, I do think that um, arts and culture should be a standalone committee. Um, and I think Landmarks has its own importance um, that, I, that I value. Um, and I don't think that just, you know, the solution is just to merge two committees to just merged committees. Um, I think we need to define purpose behind why we're merging. Um, but I think that, you know, I think we, we felt if there was any merge to occur, especially from our last committee meeting, it was definitely looking at education. Um, and I think Olympia, the other component of the health human service ed is, is youth <laughs> in that aspect, mm -hmm. um, right? So there's so many different topics in that one committee that even just as a community person, I hear from so many parents. I'm also, a, I teach in the public schools. And so I hear from a lot of parents that that committee, they don't feel supported, <laughs> you know, when they attend that committee meeting, right? Because there's just so many topics. So they can't really talk about education and the important what's going on in that committee meeting because there's the agenda is so packed. So the conversation of kind of looking at arts and culture where an agenda is a bit tiny and including education and possibly youth into kind of pulling youth into that aspect because that's where arts start. You know, you look at all of your major artists, they were all young before. <laughs> they all started in programs just like what's in our community. And so to look at how we can better our youth through the arts is beyond important. Um, education can start to have conversations around STEAM and not STEM. Um, you know, there's a lot of topics that we can be discussing um, in arts and culture um, if you merge arts and education. Um, but I have so much respect for landmarks and I, I wouldn't want to merge just to merge. So can I respond to some of this? Oh, uh, yes, it's your turn, Anisha. Go ahead. Great. Um, so, you know, every, everybody saw the feedback from the last meeting about arts um, wanting to stand alone or wanting to be a full committee. So this is one pathway to being a full committee um, in terms of a merger or like reshuffling of other committees. Um, some of that is possible, most of it is not possible. I think it, this is not merging to random committees. It's um, sort of supporting um, sort of the collective work. I think the question as to whether landmarks can actually have other things as part of the mandate is a question that we need to figure out. It has not come up in anything else that has been discussed, whether um, landmarks can or cannot have that. Um, but I do think, um, you know, there is space to cover both topics um, within this committee. I mean, the, a community board logistically can only have so many things. Um, so many committees and subcommittees and so on and so forth. Um, so I hear the feedback, but the question is really not whether it should be, like for right now, I guess, whether it should be education, but I guess like the feeling is that it's not landmarks. Crystal Field, I just got in now, been in the waiting room since 6.30. Sorry, you're not in the waiting room. No, but I've been there since 6.30 waiting really to get into the meeting yeah and i just got in like about three minutes ago okay i didn't want to interrupt your conversation all right um let's see mitchell i think you were next 
Uh, well, I had several questions, but before I ask them, uh, I just want to say, Olympia, we've never actually met, but I've been on several uh, Zooms uh, regarding community issues, and I'm so impressed by your contributions and your insights that we would definitely welcome you to be a member of our Landmarks Committee. Sure. Uh, my uh, questions, who would, uh, if there was a combined committee, who would chair it? And I'd also like to know, does the Arts and Culture Committee meet every month? It used to. I think they've been meeting every other month in recent times. But they're in a state of reorganization, so it's sort of hard to say. Um, does anybody want to say something in favor of this idea? We've talked a few about a few cons, some pros. Hmm. I'm not no sure what I pros. I'm not sure what what the suggestion is so that's why i'm not so i mean to me the pro and like again i the decision is not up to me so i am you know happy for whatever makes the most sense for the arts and culture subcommittee because it's something that i care a lot about um and i am only the interim chair so whatever happens is is what happens but I do think that there is value in being able for the arts and culture committee to be able to meet regularly. Um, going forward, subcommittees will not have the chance to meet every single month. They'll meet every other month. Um, Landmarks has a ton of folks with a lot of incredible knowledge that um, you know might add value to the arts and culture space. The arts and culture folks on the committee um, will bring a great perspective to the the landmarks work, it's a way to learn another part of what the community board does for both sides. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, boosting the ability of both committees to be able to do work, I think is a good thing. And have diverse perspectives, I think is a good thing. Um, okay, our chair, uh... Alicia Lewis Coleman has joined us, and I think it would be good to hear what she has to say about this. So, Alicia. Hi, good evening, everyone. And I, I do apologize. I'm just a little bit, um, I'm really sad right now. I'm sorry. I just lost my cousin tonight. Oh. And so, um, I, you, I do apologize for being. Thank you. I apologize for being late um, onto this uh, Zoom tonight, but I just want to just take a step back and just really, you know, really reflect on, like Anisha just said, like the reason why we are thinking to to make arts and culture a stronger, like a stand committee with landmarks. It, it makes sense for them for you to be combined because then that way you are one committee and not a subcommittee. And the, the subcommittees are, are having difficulties meeting every month. And I know arts and culture wants to be a standalone, but I don't believe that we are in that place just yet to be a standalone. We are still under construction as far as what arts and culture is going to be doing every single month to be meeting. Um, we're still at the structure of having a strong enough leadership for arts and culture. I believe that um, if you were a combined um, uh, committee that uh, Linda would be the committee chair for both committees and then there would be a, a vice chair for arts and culture. And then there will be a recording secretary for the committee at, if, if that's what the committee chooses to do. Um, and then, you know, we would, we would talk about all of that leadership positions and all of that. Once we get to a place where we make a decision on whether or not to combine the two um, committees, I mean, the subcommittee with the committee with Landmark, because also Landmark itself, they meet as necessary. They meet when there is something for them to meet about, right? And so this would strengthen both committee, uh, so subcommittee and committee. Um, and you would all learn, I mean, Linda has been a chairperson for 
quite a long time. And I believe that she has strong leadership skills that everyone could grow and learn from. And she has a history of knowing what the community board, how it operates and, and so forth. I mean, I think that um, we all have an idea of what we'd like arts and culture to look like, right? We do. Everyone, you know, um, believes that you know, they're bringing this, this great stuff with arts and cultural all to the table, but there's a way that, that the community board deals with um, structure, right? I, I don't know um, the better words to say as far as that's concerned, because there's just certain things that the community board cannot do, right? We cannot post events of people having, you know, um, events on our website. We, we don't have, um, th that's not what the community board does. I think that we have to just be very clear as to what the community board's functions are, right? And, and right now I think that we can learn from um, being uh, underneath a, a strong committee that has been operating for a long period of time. Um, right now, we did explore the idea of being with Health and Human Services. Their agenda is way too full, and um, and and we we did. I see your hand, Olympia, but I'm letting you know we've already explored that with May Lee, and her committee is very full. They have a huge agenda. Um, and on a, a monthly basis, they have more than 10 items to hear. I think you would get lost being placed underneath of them um, to combine you with them. So um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know everything that was said before I jumped on. You know, I just heard the tail end of what Anisha was saying. Um, but go ahead. I, I guess I don't want to take over, but I, I see that Olympia's hand was up after me and then Anisha, your hand was up. So. Go ahead, Olympia. Thank you. I mean, first of all, Alicia, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss and I'm not sure whether we should, you know, move this conversation to another day because it's a difficult conversation, but a very important conversation. So I'm not sure you want to go through this today because we already before you joined the call the majority of us said that we didn't like the idea of merging with landmarks and uh, we had uh, very specific reasons uh, why and um, just a clarification nobody advocated for merging uh, arts and culture with education uh, we just said that uh, both at least Tariq and I today, but I think other people maybe in the last meeting too, there, there, there is uh, in the broader community, uh, there is feeling that education is not served well enough by CB3 because currently it is along with very important issues such as health, seniors, uh, human rights. Uh, and human services, and then youth and education. And so we did some research and in many other community boards, uh, uh, landmarks, first of all, it's always standalone because it has, when it has to work, it has a lot of work. It is uh, a very specific and highly defined kind of work that this committee needs to be doing. Uh, whereas, uh, education in many other community boards is a standalone committee. Arts and cultural education exists in some, and we're not only talking about Manhattan community boards here. So we feel that arts and culture in this community board can be standalone. I offer personally that I would, even though I don't wanna be a chair of a committee and I, in the past I had said no to other things, but I offered that I would step up and chair a committee of arts and culture uh, if it had education and I would be happy you know, to work with whoever. Uh, but I don't feel that right now after all the work that we've done for years, uh, that we are not in a place where arts and culture could be a standalone committee with a fuller agenda if it takes education and, uh, and services, and sorry, and youth. But I'm also happy since this is a very important conversation and this is, a, am sure, a horrible night for you that we move it to the executive or somewhere else and we don't have this conversation today. Uh, Sandra, if it's your turn. Uh, I have to apologize. I, 
this is the first time I I I was uh, co-hosting, so I've been watching the um, the waiting room. But um, I'm sorry. Uh, I kind of I agree with uh, what Aisha, Aisha what Alicia said. Um, I think it would be a great thing for us to merge. Not only would it strengthen us, it would make our uh, meetings more consistent, right? Landmarks, as we said, um, meets as needed. Um, but also we need to look at uh, just the example we had tonight, right? Um, the building um, to be landmarked is a home of where galleries and art started in New York. The Lower East Side is just so rich in culture and art. And to me, uh, Olympia, I think you would be excellent on landmarks given your architectural background. And I mean, you're just indicative of how the two can uh, merge, how they can meet, right? Uh, your love of art and your love of structure and building. Um, also, as Alicia said, uh, Linda brings a great deal of structure to the committee. And I know it's hard to kind of understand how it works, the functionality of the community board. It's I have to call you back. I'm in the middle of a meeting. Okay, no worries. The functionality is, is not simplistic, right? You, you have to have structure. And I think it would be great to merge the two. Um, it would mean consistent meetings it would fill the need. We need more members uh, for landmarks. We don't have the uh, necessary requirement uh, as part of the bylaws. Um, and I think we're more um, compatible, actually, than, uh, as someone else said, education would be. I think arts um, and landmarking is just like sister and brother and sister, right? Because every month we get to look at um, when we do, we meet, we get to look at structures and we look at them from an artistic style, right? Gothic or whatever, but I am actually for it. And I'm sorry, I tried to speak earlier, but I couldn't get on. Thank you. Thank you. My hand is up. I'm sorry, whose hand is up? My, Crystal. Okay, Crystal. Crystal. Uh, well, I think that if we can't be a standalone committee, I think landmarks is a great idea to merge with. I, I think it's a wonderful, it is like a sister organization, and I hate to bring this up with Charis, but, you know, one of the things was they landmarked the building. Yes. That was great, great thing. I, I think that's a, a very nice merge. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Let's see. Anisha, I think you were next. Sure. I was just going to say that um, no decision will be made tonight, right? I mean, Alicia clearly has a lot going on tonight, and we can discuss the issue for as long as the two committees want to discuss it, but um, we'll take all of this feedback and, I mean, perhaps discuss it exactly, or certainly discuss with Alicia at a different time. Um, so please don't think that like whatever decision that's happening is being made tonight. All right, agreed. We're just trying to to get everybody's feedback. Uh, Alicia, did you want to say something more? Um, no, but I just, you know, thank you so much for emphasizing the fact that we don't have to make a decision tonight. This was really like an introduction of what a possibility could be. Um, and I thank you so much, Sandra and Crystal for, um, you know, for definitely exploring, wanting to explore the idea because it does, to me, it, it would make a little bit more sense, um, especially when you're fresh and brand new and you're wanting to, to venture out. And I get it, you know, we have a lot of new members on the community board, you know, um, and we, we still need to learn, you know, like there, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that I know everything that I need to know as your chair. I'm learning too. I learn from you. I learn from everyone. I seek advice when I don't know something. And, and that's what the idea is to put you in a place where there's a strong leadership. And I do believe that Linda brings a very strong leadership, um, in the history of her committee. And, and also you will learn, um, about various cultural uh, um, um, 
sorry, <laughs> my words are leaving me, but you will learn underneath of her leadership and also from each other, you know, from each committee member, you, you bring something different to the table. You know, Tariq, you run your own organization. You know, Thomas, you're, you're an educator. Um, Olympia, you, you, you have so many committees that you serve on, you know, and, and, and Mitchell, you come with a level of expertise. So like everyone here that sits on this committee, um, you all have various things that you bring to the table. Um, and, and the years that you've served on the community board, you would be able to strengthen those new members that are just getting started and learning what the community board does and how we actually are supposed to operate. I, I think that we have spent, yes, the Arts and Cultural Committee has done a lot of hard work and you spent a lot of time mm -hmm. and trying to find your way. I think that we will further explore this. I think we need to give it a little more time as you let it kind of simmer a little bit and 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 let it you know um see exactly what what it holds for you as you start to think about it and olympia you you as an architect i think that this would really be a great match for you too you know i know you don't want to look at it like that and in, in this in this place but i think you would bring a lot to landmarks committee as well like mitchell said so um Let's, let's agree that we will, you know, explore this further. Um, it doesn't have to be done tonight, but um, I thank you all for your time. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, Olympia, do you have more to say? Uh, yes, I mean, and uh, of so course- You always I think, have more to say, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just because I care a lot about this and I, I strongly disagree with Alicia, and we've had disagreements uh, over the years about this issue. I actually supported Caroline and the way this uh, subcommittee, I echo a little bit Tariq's feelings about how arts and culture has always been, you know, okay, we have time, we skip meetings, we keep it a subcommittee, we move it here, we move it there. And I feel that, you know, I've been trying because I truly believe there is something unique to our district. Uh, I've been trying to, to get it into being a real committee, attract the right people, because we had also the problems of attendance with subcommittees, etc. But I personally, I cannot serve on landmarks. If I could, I would be serving on landmarks a committee. I think if this ends up being merged, it's one more way to get rid of me because I'm gonna just stick with land use and I won't be able to participate in this uh, subcommittee work because you know, I did my best and uh, I also feel, you know, it's great because from outside community board, I get great compliments like you did the Mitchell earlier today, but from inside the community board, I've, I have been reprimanded and fought against and diminished and dealt with sexism. And so I'm not going to put up with this anymore. It is a very important issue and I'm here to serve the issue. Uh, but there are also limits to the things that one can do with their life and their time. And so if something is not fruitful, we just need to take our time and put it somewhere where it can be, you know, fruitful and it is respected. And so I, I want to work with arts and culture. I even said that I would step up and share a committee, even though, you know, I don't have the time to chair this committee. Uh, in terms of experience, I was the executive director of a place, so I can do the job. It is a very different role that I had over the years. But I feel strongly about that. This conversation has been going for three years. <laughs> and so I think uh, continuing the conversation is not somewhere where I can, I can personally continue to be. And I do hope one day CB3 will be able to, to serve arts and culture better. Okay, anyone else care to weigh in? Um, if, oh yes, Crystal, do you wanna say something? No, oh, I, I think that we should be a standalone committee. There's no qu question about that, especially this is the East Village for God's sake. But I mean, but if we cannot, then I think that landmarks is a great idea. It, it, it's true, though, that if landmarks only meets when it 
when there's a need and if the and if the arts and culture department wants to meet every month because uh if that would be allowed that would force of course the uh landmarks committee head Linda I think your name is I'm not sure yes, Linda. um what is it Linda yeah, Linda, then she would have to be there, of course. Sure. But I mean, you know, uh, as long as you don't have us meet when there's a need, you know, I mean, that's very amorphous. I think we would it, like to meet every month if we all yeah. right, or for every two months if we have to. Uh, we used to meet every month and there's um, plenty to do. Yeah, my idea, Crystal, if we do this and I'm not decided, so. You know, I'm, I'm not speaking as though I'm advocating for this, but w we would meet every month. There would be plenty of issues between the two committees. Yeah, well, I think would justify well, that would a monthly be, meeting. Well, that would be wonderful. I, I think it's a, a very good combination. It gives us a history. It gives arts and culture a history, mm. a backup, an historical backup. Right. And I guess if if we were to do it, I would look forward to learning much more about arts in our community, which, you know, of course, I'm very interested in the arts, but I haven't had a lot of time to focus in on the issues. So I would be interested in, in that learning experience. I don't know if the other members of Landmarks Committee feel the same way, uh, I suspect uh, Sandra does. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's some benefits, but there's also two very different subjects. And sometimes yeah. it's hard to see them as one. Well, they're not one. No. But they, but they coexist very well with each other, but they are not one. Well, I mean, if it was just, speaking. you know, if we just had a meeting, we said, okay, like we did tonight, this is the landmarks piece of the meeting. And this is I the mean, arts piece of the meeting. I don't think that would be very satisfying. Mm-hmm. Right, I think everyone should participate in both. Mm. That's interesting. I never thought of it that way. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's. It depends uh, on who's who wants to do what. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you have yeah. an active committee, it's yeah. very exciting. Yeah. Um, That's Anisha, when it gets did you exciting. Want to say something more, Anisha? Just to say that, like, if they're if there does like if this does become one committee i think the expectation for sure is that like everybody participates in all of the pieces mm -hmm. of this it would not be two separate committees that just meet at the same time it would yeah. be that like everybody would expect to understand and participate in landmarks resos and the same for anything that's more cultural um and I don't know, I mean, I think well, I have a good sense and Linda, you also have a good sense of like sort of where everybody feels. So um, again, certainly happy to keep on discussing, but I feel like we have a... Yeah, I, I think I have a good idea too. I made some notes. Um, so I guess what we should do, Anisha, is uh, discuss this further, take it back to the executive committee mm -hmm. and... Uh, perhaps schedule the next meeting together again to see what, you know, whether we can come up with a, a means of working together. And if we can't, we have to let the executive committee know that. Yeah, so we can figure out next steps with exec. Um, mm -hmm. And I also wanna make sure that all of the arts and culture folks know that, um, you know, if there are issues for arts and culture that are coming up, we can still, you know, do resolutions, et cetera, et cetera. Like the work- Absolutely. Can happen if that needs to happen as well. Sorry, can you explain this again? Um, that uh, So we are meeting as arts and culture today. So if there are actual agenda items for like typical business, um, that's not just discussing a merger. If there's a pressing issue, um, we can always still do a resolution. Um, because right now I feel like we've done the planning. It's just figuring out sort of logistically where arts and culture will be. Um, but I don't want anybody to feel like if there are pressing matters in the cultural space that we CB3 needs to weigh in on that that opportunity is gone. Olympia. 
I mean, the, the issue procedurally has always been that in order for us to do a resolution, there needs to be the item listed in the agenda of the meeting. So since we don't have a leadership, uh, so right now the resolution that we need, of course, uh, is uh, we are on a deadline about the state budget. And uh, as you know, earlier in the You're muted. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, earlier in the year, we successfully passed in the Arts and Culture uh, Subcommittee um, support for a WPA, but it was vague. So right now, actually, there is a legislation. And as we speak, there is traction. And so this is major for arts uh, workers and cultural workers who have been completely out of work for a full year. And there is support for them, actually, I mean, they were asking for $2 billion. I don't know if they would get all, but, and this would not, of course, this would be um, a, a WPA style uh, program that would apply to all unemployed workers. But of course, as the sector that has been mostly hit, arts and culture would, would be like the unemployed people would benefit greatly. So, yeah. you know, something like that, it would, it would, be very meaningful to have another, you know, reso now that we have a specific thing. But the problem with CP3 is that, you know, the way we do it, if you had someone who was chairing, who was on top of that, maybe it would have been on the agenda and we would be, uh, you know, able to, to convey in time our reso because that's the problem with the resolutions. If they come too late, they, they, they're just too late. And so that's why I think you wanna have you know, if we decide that that's the way we go, we're going to find someone who's going to be doing this work for this committee, right? Mm -hmm. But right now, we don't have someone who's doing that work, and it has been right. painful. Right. Um, <laughs> we can, I mean, we can talk about it offline, but um, we can do a resolution for next month and have it approved if that is something the subcommittee wants to do. Um, we just have to plan for it, so it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, if there's something that should be on next month's agenda, you know, that is in, in pursuit of, an, of a reso, we should put it on. That's, that's what you have to do, unfortunately, those the rules. Um, my hand is up. Can I say something or sure. am I muted? No, you're not muted. Um, you know, there was at one time something called CETA. I don't know if anybody remembers it, C-E-T-A. And it had very much to do with the arts and uh, being able to give stipends to artists uh, for work in the community. <clears throat> I remember that Theater for the New City, uh, we did our street theater through CETA. We had a 25-member company. Um, that was funded through CETA. Uh, we go to all five boroughs, uh, but we do a number of the performances in the, on the Lower East Side and, and in the East Village. And, and what kind um, of program was that, Crystal? Was that state, city? It what? was a. It was a. I think it was a. Might have been a federal program. I'm not sure. I only remember that it was CETA, and it might have been a city program, or, um, <laughs> but it was definitely government funded, and it, and you and of course it was you, you know, <clears throat> community involvement was a, a great necessity. Uh, it wasn't uh, an educational program. It was really an arts, straight arts program, but of course, um, there was community involvement in it, which is so important. And uh, anyway, I could maybe do some research on what it actually was. Yeah, I only if you remember do that, I'd love very... to know the history of that. Okay, I will. If that is I kind of along the it. same lines that Olympia is speaking about of a WPA type program. Some yes, it was a funding that it, would support artists. 
Yes, it was a WPA type program, but um, <clears throat> what was nice about it was it wasn't tangential to the arts as WPA was a little bit. Uh, it was straight on, you know. Um, you know, it's 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 very important to have arts in education. We because we have an after school program that's free to our neighborhood kids, but the thing is that that's not our main thrust. The main thrust of an artist is the doing of art. And it it go, got to go out to the community. That's number one. But it doesn't have to be tangential. It can be straight, straight mm-hmm. head on. And mm-hmm. that's what CETA was. So okay, well, that's, uh, that's I will look into it. Yeah, let's have a little report on that next time we speak. Okay. Um, All right, I will. Uh, first, David Adams, and then Olympia. I uh, I, I remember CETA. It was a federally funded program yeah. for nonprofits to hire people, basically. Right. You get yeah. a city job, you got all, all definitely nonprofits. That's what CETA was. Yeah. Actually, I was on it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, CETA let me was, tell you, it was made a big difference. Federal, federal funding for nonprofit organizations, basically. Right. <laughs> That sounds that sounds revolutionary. It was Richard Nixon. What do you expect? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. He was a great fun friend of the arts. Um, okay, uh, Olympia, your turn. Yes, so I posted in the chat the Wikipedia page. It was called, uh, you know, the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act, CETA. And as David said, the funding was federal, but then it was distributed at the state and every state dealt with it differently. And after I testified at the New York State about the economic development budget about WPA, the guy who was one of the founding members of the CETA Foundation, who ended up being the president of NIFA, Ted Berger, called me. And so, and he talked to me about CETA too. So I feel that the problem is timing because it's not for next month. If we really want to write a nice rezo, like that would be to pass it at the exec or whatever, if you can add it now on the agenda and pass it before April 1st and, and making this connection because everybody I talked to who was associated with CETA said we need to demand that, you know, first of all, yes, we want the funding and second to go with a model like CETA because it was the best one. But I think um, I think if we do a reso like that in, um, in um, next month in April, after the budget has been voted, the money's not going to be there. So we're going to be a bit late. Uh, but if people are interested and uh, we can find a procedural way to you know, present it at the exec or somewhere else and we can do it. But yes, CETA is something definitely on our radar. And it's, it's I, I posted a Wikipedia page and there is another page that I can post later that has a lot of details about how it worked. Okay, then you don't need me to research it, right? Or do you want me to? Do, do we know enough about it, uh, Olympia, that we don't need to put Crystal to work? Yeah. No, I mean, it, I, it'd be, you know, it's good to know if there were artists, uh, I mean, uh, designers and painters as well as actors involved. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. I'd have to find out well I don't know and I know we're not supposed to I'm supposed to know how to run the community board meetings and one thing we're not supposed to do is come up with resolutions on the fly uh, without them being on the agenda so that the public can come to the meeting and weigh in so you know we are okay I'll I'll look into it but, but Olympia is right. If we wait until next month, it will be too late to affect this year's state budget. Oh. Olympia, if you just want to send an email to um, Alicia, and then maybe also, I don't know who would n- n- know um, what is possible. Linda, I don't know if you have any idea of. Um, well, Alicia's with us, so she can rule. I'm not sure if Alicia's actually. Listening, though. <laughs> I'm listening. I hear you. Whether um, it's possible to do a rezo 
this month um, presented to full board or to exec? No, we, we can't do that. We have to wait. And um, actually at all resolutions, normally the, if the committee wants to work on it tonight and then you could present it next month, yes, we can do something like that if you wanna work on it. And, um, and then you can present it next month, but it won't be able to be presented until um, then it won't be able to go before a uh, full board. Uh, hmm. Let's see, I think. All right, let me, let me, let me, let me think about that. Let me uh, ho hold, hold that thought, hold that thought. Let okay. me, figure, let me figure this out. Hold on. Shall we continue discussion while you think? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I have to just do one consultant. Go ahead. Okay, David, uh, you have your hand up. You're muted, David. Yeah, I said when things couldn't be done timely enough, that's when exec would take action. Um, that's what was my impression. That uh, that if it falls into that category or not, because uh, seriousness of it, I don't know. But um, I always yeah. I thought, you no, know, Alicia's there; she can let us know. It's it's my understanding that Ezek would take it up if it was an emergency. Well, that's what this would be if we couldn't we couldn't get any um, anything done from it until after until the time for it had passed. This would make it that would make this an emergency, no? Maybe we we have to see how our chair feels about that. I mean, if I were asked, I would say. Having, having brought some things that I thought were emergencies to exec and having them slap me down, I am, am I'm fairly knowledgeable about this. Um, so <laughs> um, if you, uh, I don't know how much this is formulated in your mind, Olympia, but if we could draft a resolution, um, we would certainly have it ready for next month. I, I, if, yeah, but would that be timely enough or that's the question? If we're, if it's only going to go for next month, then we can take the time to draft it. So, no, yeah. but I'm saying is that time enough to get it affected? I mean, are we making a, uh, a mute resolution? Are we missing the deadline? When, is, when is the state budget due, Olympia? I think March, April 1st. March 31st. Exactly. March 31st, and we're not making it. Unless, unless they get a deadlock and they can go on for months. Yeah, but they haven't been doing that lately. Though maybe the way Cuomo is these days, maybe... He, they won't be so nice about cooperating with him. You see the problem with one party rule, you see that? <laughs> In any case, I would say if we think it's urgent enough to work on a resolution to take to exec, we should do that. Oh, my hand is up. Whose hand? Sorry. Oh, Crystal, Crystal your hand is up. <laughs> Sorry, perhaps, well, perhaps we can make a resolution that is um, <clears throat> broad enough so that they don't, we are not forced to go into too much detail, you know, mm -hmm. and then we can make the, and we can make the deadline that way. Um, uh, and, and then while we've made the deadline, then we can do the research that's needed to, you know, get it really, really by the, uh, in every detail as to what, you know what if I'm saying? We do at the community level, we need the, we need the, we need the community, we need the community input. We can't, that, that would make it a dubiously qualified resolution. That's right. I, I could be wrong and excuse me, I'm going to jump in really quickly, but I do believe we don't work on resolutions at exec. I, I've, I've not known us to work on resolutions at exec. You don't work on them, but that you pass them. Exec passes resolutions. Yes. When, uh, when it's when it uh, comes from the borough president or when it's an emergency. And there is an emergency. The it's, it's come from exec and emergencies. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this constitutes an emergency. Is everyone well, that you have to this, that's something you're going to have to decide whether you know that's. But if the we only, do it through a community without without having a public hearing, 
That's got, I think that's a couple yeah, of laws against that's a that. Problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a big problem. You know that the public will have a fit and I have enough controversy on my head right now. Thanks. <laughs> then I think we should put this subject of this resolution on the agenda for next month. And I think yeah, I people who are mean. knowledgeable enough to draft such a resolution should do so. And I'm looking at you, Olympia. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's let Thomas speak well, in Olympia. Um, if, if we do make a resolution, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily, it's not binding for them to fund it, um, but we'd be better off petitioning one of the, the state officials who usually come to our meetings to see if they can um, put in something for us. Go ahead, Olympia. Yes, so actually, um, yes and yes, in the sense that we could do this with exec because we already passed the resolution. So this is not something that the public and CB3 hasn't reviewed that. This has already been in the agenda four months ago and we already passed the resolution only that at the time, uh, Senator May and Assembly Member Fahi hadn't introduced, actually they had even introduced the legislation, but we didn't refer to them, we didn't know. So right now, last week, uh, they were heard at the Parks Committee and they are discussing about giving them some money to pass it. So, so this wouldn't be a new subject for CB3 and our committee. Our community and our committee has already said that this is something we want. The question would be, we could now write something specific because it is happening as we speak. So it has become more concrete. And then to Thomas' point, Assemblymember Epstein is already a co-sponsor. I'm not sure on Yulene because he said she would, but I'm not sure she has made it. It takes a long time. Brad Holman is already a co-sponsor. Uh, and um, what's her name? Deborah Gleek said she would consider. But for yes. them, the way it works right now with the budget is it's all like um, internal negotiations. So for these elected officials to, to have extra public support and say, see our constituents, see that we are discussing these, they strongly feel about that. They had asked it earlier and now they want. And I think if we write these, what we could do is make the references to CETA because one of the concerns that many art workers have is a lot of the funding through relief right now, even directly to organizations, and that perpetuates some discrimination about who gets the funding and who doesn't. And instead, very often these WPA kind of uh, programs work better when you give them directly to the artists and the art workers. And that's how CETA worked with a very proper process about how the foundation would choose the qualifying artists. But a lot of the other relief programs that were passed, unfortunately, are going either to venues, theaters, or, or other like save our stages and end up going for overhead and rents and stuff like that. And, and the workers don't receive what they need. And that's why this WPA style kind of legislation was introduced. So I think if we want to do it, there would be a way to do it. It would take some work from many of us, but, uh, but we could do it if we want it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, particularly if you do have a resolution that was written, as you say, four months ago, why not pull it out, put a cover letter on, letter on it and send it to all the state legislators? It's already passed, it's been accepted. Anisha, it was in, under your committee. Yeah. I'll do it. Um, yeah, we passed in economic development. So just to be clear, because I'm not like this, I've never experienced having to do this right now. We don't have to do anything. What, what, do we need to discuss something tonight? <laughs> I guess, like whatever this cover letter is or an update, or can it just be some cover letter attached to the other resolution, which was more general, be presented at exec and then exec says yes or no, because mm -hmm. I would, yeah, I would say that's the right way to do it. Okay. I, again, we might consult since we have exec in the flesh here in Alicia, if she thinks that would fly. I mean, if anything, it's like we 
follow up about it and try it. And I mean, Linda, mm -hmm. this is what you did um, the last time. Um, and we see what exact has to say and if mm -hmm. it doesn't exact to say. So. We need to figure out to whom this letter should go. I would presume all of our state reps. Um, and it can be a very brief letter. It can just, you know, kind of mention CETA as an example of, of the kind of program we have in mind, attach the resolution and off it goes. It seems, that seems pretty straightforward and it doesn't have to get voted on again. Anybody else have comments about this or any other subject? We are going to have to figure out how this money goes. What precisely, I mean, because the CETA thing was, as, he, as the gentleman said, it was for or, nonprofit organizations to hire artists. Mm -hmm. In our case, actors. Now, is it is that what we want for it to? I mean, because there's usually some kind of argument in in, in uh, you know between the individual artist and the organization. Uh, the CETA program definitely went to nonprofit organizations, but they with a definite purpose. It could only be used to fund. Uh, you know, payroll. Mm -hmm. You had to do a payroll and it had to go to the artists. That, right. in, in our case, actors. Um, I mean, is that the way we so, want to do it? Or so is if there you say be a you want a, a CETA like model, that's what you're asking for. I'm that's sure what, that, that's the CETA model. Yeah, yeah that, that the, the thought was probably that you need somebody to administer these programs. And that's why it goes through a nonprofit organization. Right. I'm, I mean, I'm all for it. I, I don't, I, you know, the argument is going to come up. What about the individual artist who is not connected to any organization? What happens to them? You know, but then again, this is the only way that I know that the money can go. Uh, and, and if it's specifically directed so that you can't use it for rent or, or mortgage or whatever, but only for that could work. Anisha, do you have something more to say here? Just to sort of close the conversation and figure out next steps. Um, I okay. think perhaps Olympia and I can work on this cover letter and we'll circulate it to the group prior to exec um, to make any comments since we because of open meeting law, well, we can't actually meet again um, or have a group discussion, but we'll figure out how to put something um, concise together. Or maybe not concise, we'll see. <laughs> Sounds good. And if we are going to have another joint meeting uh, next month, what topics would people like to have on the agenda? Opening, opening the theaters. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Opening, uh, you know, I'm a theater, so of course I care about the theaters. But there are art galleries, and but I'm, and I'm just saying my opening, opening the theaters. You know, uh, what percentage, uh, and how, and can they? And, and we could talk uh, about opening galleries as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. That's I, I, I think that's a bit. We that's definitely want that. Pertinent because, you know, movie theaters are being opened. Um, and obviously, you'd like live venues to be opened also. Definitely. And then there's economics associated with that that, you know, I don't really have a deep understanding of, but I can figure if you can only open up with 25% full, does it make, does it, is it possible to do that? Uh, you know what? 25% is not so terrible for a little, a little organization. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, 25 people every night or 50 people every night is wonderful. Okay. Great. 
Okay. And you, you know, there are times. Uh, all right. You... Well, shouldn't this discussion, if you're putting it on the agenda, shouldn't this discussion be for the next meeting? Yes, I, I agree. And Linda, um, I can we can circle back. There are some agenda topics that um, have been waiting, okay. people, and etc. And then anybody else on the committee is welcome to email me ideas for. Please, please yeah. weigh in. Um, let's see, Olympia, your hand was up and then it went down. Yeah, because I, I can email uh, Anisha, but basically say free opening. Also, you know, the rights of the people who have to go and work in these places are very important because artists don't want to jeopardize their health because, you know, they need to go in unsafe environments and stuff like that. But sure. I can follow up with Anisha and definitely open culture, getting some feedback about how it's, you know, evolving. Yeah, that's on the agenda for sure. Yeah, okay. and 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 performances in the parks we would like to be have that allowed and is that not allowed this summer last summer it was not allowed they have our permits they have pushed them over to 2021 which is very nice but they haven't said yes but they haven't said no but they haven't okay. said yes Oh, I, I, I put that on the list. So I think that probably we're ready to wrap up. Do you think, Anisha? And we will. Yes. We'll we'll speak and figure out what to do next. I move to adjourn. <laughs> the what? Second. I move to adjourn. I said. Oh, you move to adjourn. You do. Okay. If whoever's in charge of of roll call for the art side of things, see who's still here. Uh, I can see that all of us from Landmarks are still here. All right, great. So we're present at the close. And uh, with if no one objects, we will adjourn. All right. Okay. Good night. Bye, Good everybody. night. Good night. <laughs>